welcome to BND TV. We have created a series of talks for you entitled The Secrets of Sleep and Success. We are on a mission to empower 1 million people or more, harness the awesome power of sleep to dramatically improve the quality of their lives. We hope you enjoy. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Secrets of Sleep and Success. And um, you have heard me say this many times, but I'm going to repeat it. Sleep is the foundation of success. It doesn't matter the area of your expertise. Sleep will bring you rest and rejuvenation. You will feel younger, you will fall sick less often, you will gain the ability to make good decisions and you become irresistibly attractive. So sleep has a lot going for it. Sleep gives you tremendous energy. And we've talked all about this. Dinesh and I have written that book, Sleep Your Way to Success. And we've talked all about how better sleep can allow you to channelize that energy into realizing your dreams towards resounding success. Now, today, I have someone who is full of energy. Like, I don't know where he gets it from, really. And who has not only realized his dream of being financially independent, he earns a few crores of rupees a year. Uh, he does it from his home with a team of just like four or five people. And as if that wasn't enough, he didn't stop there. He created an entire system that trains other people to do the same thing. Uh, I'm sure by now you have guessed who I'm talking about. None other than Siddharth Rajshekar. Welcome Siddharth. Tonight, Siddharth and I are going to have a conversation about sleep and about success. Thank you so much for inviting me. You know, it's uh, an honor to connect with you and uh, looking forward to having this conversation with you. Yeah. So Sid, let's get straight to the heart of the matter. We've talked a lot about sleep on many of our other videos, but on this video, I really want to talk about success because half our book, you know, we've got sleep your way to success. Half mm. our book is about success. Success. Okay. <laughs> right. And by the way, I got your book as well over here. I got gifted uh, this book and it has really, really uh, impacted a lot of things that I do. Um, Thank you. You can coach. It is a brilliantly written book, by the way, guys. So, Sid, give me four, five, six tips, techniques on what will bring success. What are your secrets of success? Whatever uh, you know, results that I'm getting now in whatever business uh, life, it is all due to the foundation that has been laid many, many years back, probably many decades back. And uh, one of them is definitely the spiritual foundation. Even you've spent so many years in the spiritual foundation. And in my growing years, when I was eight, nine years old, I got in touch with my spiritual master. And uh, so I've been following the spiritual path and that has been like the underlying the core and the theme of whatever I do. And I guess, uh, uh, that is such an important factor for success because mostly people look at success out, outside in all the external stuff, like how much money you're making or which car you're driving or stuff like that. But I would say, uh, you know, all of that is external, but the, the, true, the true foundation for all the success comes from spiritual grounding and uh, spiritual values uh, that have been installed at a much younger age or what we call as samskaras. So I want to say the first... Uh, principle of success is, uh, is these impressions or samskaras. It starts with my, I have to thank my parents who gave me the right foundation. And of course, life took a different turn, went through my exploration journey, and then was able to realize the value of spirituality much later on. Uh, but when I look back and then of course the personal development will have to break it down. I have like some five principles to share, uh, but the foundation is spirituality. That's what I wanted to you know mention first. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I also keep saying that, you know, when yes. you meditate, and yeah. when you have that spirituality within you, then whatever you put in that field somehow sprouts and grows so beautifully. Absolutely. I'm totally with you on that principle. For me, the first success principle is uh, less is more. You know, sometimes we want to go and achieve more, but we have so many complications in our life. And in my case, also I had many complications in, in business, in life, in finances. And I did not have a clarity in what I wanted to do. And uh, the moment I started to eliminate all the, you know, all the distractions from my life, I, I started to see 
you know, growth happen. So there's a beautiful formula, right? Where you can multiply your results by subtracting all the crap from your life. Correct. Multiplication through subtraction. So that's the first principle. And uh, what all do you remove is uh, like, I started to remove habits that were not, uh, you know, taking me towards my goal. Uh, people who are not aligned with the vision because people also have, you know, energy. We are all energetically connected and, you know, sometimes people don't align and it, they either drain your energy or give you the energy. Correct. So I was able to move out, slowly move away from people who do not align. Uh, then the other aspect of less is even things. Uh, I'm a big uh, believer in minimalism as a concept uh, because I li like this whole simple living, high thinking uh, principle. That is, uh, so I have very few clothes that I wear. I just have a very small wardrobe, few things, less things, but the best. You know, I like to keep the best. Uh, and uh, it really opened up a lot of things because when I was moving from Bangalore to Chennai in 2016, I had a wardrobe like full of clothes, uh, more than 80% I was not even using. And when I moved from there to here, I decided, okay, let me just give away everything. I just gave it away to some blind school. And then I had very less, of course, I, I didn't ask my wife to do the same thing. Okay. Because they, <laughs> okay, that's just a disclaimer for all of you. Why is move? Why is yeah. move to that? <laughs> yes, I needed to have that food on the table. So I didn't want to <laughs> rock the boat over there. Yeah. But then, uh, but the idea was, uh, once I started to let go of all the, all the stuff, uh, that was filling up the space. And even I know like everything has an energy, like every item in your room has an energy that impacts the way you think. So Ever since I adopted minimalism, I, I saw even my thoughts getting more clearer uh, and the space around me, I'm all, I like to keep it cl clean and with less clutter. And uh, then later on, when I was doing a study on Vastu and other things. I know Vastu is deriving from Vastu, which is the things and everything has a connection and a thing I can either give you energy or remove energy. So I understood the science behind it. And uh, it was amazing to see how, uh, the progress started to happen once that uh, once I understood the principle of less is more, uh, not just in, in things but even in the other my my entire environment. So that's the first but, principle. But you know, yeah. you know, so that uh, it's very interesting. You said less is more, but you also mentioned I have less, but I have the best. Yes, and that is such a fantastic thing to say because you know many people compromise on quality mm. and somehow tend to accumulate stuff which as you say take energy you know yeah. we have a chapter in our book sleep your way to success which is called adding by subtracting fantastic uh, nice, nice so <laughs> we're we're right in tune with this but but i mm. absolutely really totally you know i have been uh, uh trained even uh even by gurde himself i remember once i was in um, nice. i was in holland mm. and i had bought a sewing machine for my mom Okay. She had wanted a sewing machine and I had bought one and it was on sale mm. and there was a much better model, which was not on sale, which was almost double the cost. Okay. So I bought the cheaper one and then I just couldn't handle it. You know, I, mm. I went to the shop and returned it and I said, mm. I want this more expensive one. Yeah. It really stretches my budget, but I want the best for my mom. Yes. And yes. then when I met Gurudev uh, at the airport, and, you know, I was rushing around trying to get the mm. bat back and all that. He said, what is this? And then I told him this. Mm. I told uh, Gurudev Shishi Ravishankarji this, that yes. uh, I got this uh, machine for mom and, and then I did this. And, mm. and he said, never settle for anything less than the yes. best. And, That's uh, an amazing validation. That's such a powerful, uh, you know, concept, like to have less. And there's also a book called uh, Essentialism, actually. Mm -hmm. which goes uh, deeper into the concept because minimalism people think, okay, just give up everything, renounce right. everything. Just be like, just have uh, just wear, <laughs> just keep it to the bare bones minimum, minimum, but the concept of essentialism, like having less, but the best, uh, even I got that idea from there. So, so whether it be buying my Mac or, you know, whatever technology or the microphone, like I don't want to compromise on quality. Exactly. Like you said, let's go for the best because that's going to create that experience for others. So the second principle is, uh, is I started to design my life in cycles, you know, hugely influenced by, you know, our Vedic uh, texts and stuff uh, like everything, cyclical, right? birth and death yeah. cycles, seasonal cycles, women go through the cycles, uh, yoga cycles, like everything is cyclical in nature. So why not put your business into cycles? You know, I was thinking about that idea. So uh, I like to work a four day work week 
So I like to work for two days and then take a break. Like today is my the day that I don't have uh, any meetings. But since you know you want to do this, I I do that. So I don't really have any conversations. I like to spend time just learning. You know, going deep into different stuff. So uh, working for two days, taking a break, then working for two days, taking a break. So a four day work week is uh, another principle that most people. I mean, they're not able to do it because they're living their life completely ad hoc. You know, it's like. <laughs> they are ready for everyone anyone calls them they say yes for yes to everything and uh, that puts them into a spin so there's no structure in their life and uh, so ever since i adopted this into my life like i know my monday morning is a leadership council call tuesday is a hackathon like thursday so i know i've charted out like specific days of the week on what activities i'm going to do and just doing the same thing again and again and again and and it's not uh it's not about trying to like many people think that if, if, if things are too structured, then there is uh, there's no creativity or room to grow. But actually, the people who are super successful, they are very structured, you know. And they, but they, there's, but in within the structure, they're able to compound exactly. their effort, you know, and compound their their energy. So whatever I've, I was doing even three years back, I'm still doing that even now. That's why the results are showing because I've I've not changed my message. I've not changed my routine there's always you know sometimes life takes over there's ups and downs but uh because there's a structure even like maybe 3 months down the line on this particular date if you ask me what's the plan for this day i'd be i'd be i will be able to give some idea okay so working in cycles has really helped me uh, so designing my life in cycles and designing my business also in cycles and uh, the when it comes to cycles also like breaking it down to Weekly cycle, monthly cycle, quarterly cycle, annual cycle. Mm-hmm. What are the, the the top one, two, three things to be done? Like for example, uh, for me, uh, annual cycle is uh, uh, I like to do like a panchakarma once a week, once in a year, or once in two years. Uh, and I think uh, that's what's keeping this body uh, fit. Uh, you know, I'm for, I'm going to turn forty, so father of two boys, so. Because of following that regimen and cycle, and I tell you the reason I got into discovering Panchakarma as a concept was, uh, I actually on this topic what you teach, uh, 2015 I I could not sleep for two weeks. I went through a panic attack uh, because I was just overworking, Correct. not eating on time, uh, not sleeping on time. I would just sleep like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., wake up at 8 a.m., hit Bangalore traffic. I used to stay in Marathali on the bridge. Oh, Office was on <laughs> MG Road. And that drive is like a grueling drive, 90 minute cutting through airport road and you know getting there and then coming back. And it really hit me hard uh, and I could not sleep for like two weeks. And uh, I went to, luckily I had an, you know, I went to an Ayurvedic doctor there in Bangalore itself. And he told me that your, your entire system is messed up. You know, your, mm-hmm. all your elements inside, you know, the kapha, vata, pitta, all is like all fully imbalanced. So he said, uh, okay, do a panchakarma. So I went through that first time I got to, you know, discover what that is. Uh, but when I, they punch your karmas, you know, literally punch, <laughs> punch the whole thing by, I think the last day I was uh, literally, I was gone. Uh-huh. But when I came back, I felt I was like five years younger. You know, I just, it was like a completely rejuvenated Absolutely. sleep was back on track. I realized then I was completely moved into a different diet also. Uh, of course, I've been following Sattvic diet for many years, so I don't eat onion garlic. I don't eat any of that stuff. So that also is, has a big role to play in energy. When you ask like, how do I have energy is because uh, I understand food also has pranic values. Prana is there. Yeah. So I'm a big believer of uh, only consuming things that's going to, you know, enhance the energy or, uh, you know, but not remove it. And, you know, you, know, Sibar, you, yeah. you said something very interesting. You said you had a panic attack. Even I had, and it was exactly the same. It was overwork, abuse yes. of the body. And um, I started doing research. You know, I have a master's degree in mathematics from IIT Bombay. Wow, and nice. one thing I know is how to do research. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I started doing research and, and I came across this absolutely amazing fact. Did you know that there are neurons in your stomach? Like we always oh, think neurons are yeah. in your brain. Yes. They're there in your stomach. And they, th- there are more neurons in your stomach than there are in your spinal cord. Wow. So your, mm. your, your gut actually has, is, is, is a second brain because it is equipped with neurons, right? Amazing. And the communication is from gut to brain, 90%, only 10% brain to gut. So what you eat wow. mm. uh, really affects how you think because your gut is driving that. 
Yes. And a lot of anxiety, panic, depression is 99.5% caused by diet. And most people don't know that. And they try Absolutely. to pop pills and they try to do all sorts of things, mm. but they don't fix that very basic thing that requires to be fixed. You are what you eat. Exactly. Right? And you know what? Uh, the, the second time, th- th- thank you for mentioning. Second time when I went for Panchakarma was that's for a different reason. I had a back pain and, you know, I was, I was just working too long in this. And again, when I went through the Panchakarma process, it was again to do the the stomach and intestine. I realized that all the problem is there. If your if your digestion is gone, everything gets hit, right? Everything gets hit. <laughs> so that was a big revelation for me. Like even a back pain was cured by just through the, through the time. and that is what's amazing about these alternative healing therapies. You know, mm. uh, they. I, I remember the I had a slip disc, and mm. I remember when I had gone to the uh, to a craniosacral therapist. She she was giving me craniosacral therapy. Yes. Something else I teach. Yeah. Uh, she worked on my head, and I kept telling her, "But I have a pain in my back. Just just mm. just lie down." <laughs> and amazingly, after one hour, mm. the pain in my back had reduced by like ninety nine percent. And that's the amazing part about a holistic vision of yourself. It's not like. A backache is not a backache. A backache could be coming from your tummy. It could be coming from yes. not sleeping enough. It could be coming from so many things. Mm. And just addressing the backache doesn't work. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure that's the same in business. Yeah, it's the same in business. Like a business problem is never a business problem. It is usually a personal problem. <laughs> you know, that's showing up in business. You know, uh, and th- that's absolutely like when I look at my business as a as an organism. You know, with different interests, you know, different systems within the business, like how in our body of digestive system, uh, cardiovascular system, new nervous system, business also has system systems and all need to be running healthily Absolutely. You know, for it to run. So, uh, so, so yeah. maybe, maybe you do panchakarma for business, huh? <laughs> Possibly. I'm, I'm taking some of those elements. You know? When I say less is more and for business cycles, I'm pretty, I think taking the principles of uh, panchakarma and incorporating it for business. I mean, See, usually the complications in business arise when when there's lack of vision or, mm-hmm. and when there's lack of nourishment into each of those different uh, systems within the business, just like our human body. Mm-hmm. So I think when you're able to give the right nourishment, and usually nourishment starts from the 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 founder of the business, like whoever is running the business. And my mentor says, you know, you're not you don't run a business, you are the business, you know, because you you are the one who's all the ideas are coming from there. So if this is not working, it's not going to show in your bank. You know, it's not going to show because money is a scorecard in business so uh the second principle was uh, i mean is uh, ever since i moved into the cyclical concept of uh, you know designing life in business i could see the 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 progression in growth in the business and also clarity in thoughts clarity in making the right decisions uh, for i also listen to the earl nightingale's uh, you know strangest secret mm. that also it just shifts the brain thinking patterns while i'm listening to it i get a lot of new ideas for the business it's a brilliant, it's a brilliant. Yeah. yeah so all of that has really helped uh, the third principle which is uh, which i heard for the first time in around 2014 uh, is the golden triangle of success which is to learn do and teach uh, simultaneously uh, the fastest way to g- learn is to teach and I'm sure you you've been a, you've been a teacher for so many years, right? So I think more than the students, uh, you the growth that you would have experienced in yourself is it's amazing. And that's what happened even for me last three years, just by me, me merely being in the zone of preparing something to share with my community every week. Uh, that has been uh, more than the community benefiting. I've benefited from that <laughs> that process. So I think that that's a very big success principle, which most people who go through the education system. They get a good job, or they you no, know, they hit a, they go to IIT, IIM, you know, get the horns, and they feel okay. Uh, now it's done. Okay, I finished my studies. Now it's time for, uh, you know, just whatever. So I think that lifelong learning principle is so important. You know, you know Siddharth, I had the good fortune of flunking. Okay, good. <laughs> so, so when I was in IIT, I took three and a half years to finish a two-year course, mm. and in the last one and a half years, because the the load was so less, I actually had time to think. Which most people don't. I, yes. I mean, when people are working in jobs, mm. you are your brain is occupied nine to five, nine to seven sometimes, no. and then you know it's the like you said the drive, mm. uh, and 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 people just don't have time to think, and suddenly they are fifty years old, and they say, "What the hell just happened?" <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so so I I really say I am really thankful to the to the guys who failed me. 
<laughs> because uh, uh, they gave me the time to think and and you're so right you know i sat and thought and and really my vision about life became mm. so clear and for 30 years now i have been mm. living those principles you know the first question i asked myself was what is it that you want like what do i want mm. and the answer was i want to be happy and <laughs> i want to be rich mm. yes but never rich at the cost of happy exactly that's the priority mm. right and so it was just obvious for me to take up teaching meditation mm. and through my life my decisions have been so simple because mm. is it making me happy mm. is it making me rich yes yes do it that's it is it making me happy but maybe not making me so rich doesn't matter you are in the game for happiness do it yes do it mm. but if it, is it making me happy no is it making me very rich yes i will not do it yes absolutely absolutely totally with you on that <laughs> amazing so you know for me this whole concept of uh, like learn do teach has been a game changer it's been like literally speed learning like i've learned so much uh, even beyond what uh, like the education system can teach just by by doing it and learning through you know of course learning from mentors who is the best me way. a faster way to do it because they have it's the best way. the learning curve yeah absolutely and, uh, and of course learning from mentors who are implementers there's a difference right. oh. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of mentors who like who like just yeah. just like to teach but they don't they may not be applying like typical mba institutes the right. teachers professors <laughs> they have never run a business okay right. it, it's just a uh, head knowledge but i think when it comes from somebody who's run a business it's uh, it's it's different and uh, that has an impact it lands uh, information yeah. lands in gujarati so, they say mba is mane badu aavde chhe meaning i know everything <laughs> i know everything <laughs> which know, is perhaps so, the worst way of running anything in your life when you say i know no, everything that's it you're finished it stops because, it stops because you stopped learning you stopped growing mm. you you're finished right that's it and totally. i have said that since we brought this up you know i have always wondered uh it's masters of business administration but very rarely do an M- does an mba graduate actually start a business that's and true all the uh, you know all the uh, the uh, criteria for a great college is placements mm. so it's like ma- masters of other people's business you know that's <laughs> true like yeah like that yeah they they just uh, employable you know yeah. they are not employer <laughs> it's a different different thought process I think that's such a important. Uh, I would say it's such a thing in our whole Indian DNA, right? Uh, families, uh, like it, it starts from what parents aspire for the kids, and then what kids look at fellow peers. And uh, I mean, that's why this topic of redefining the whole education and employment system is so close to my heart because Absolutely. I feel there's a there's another way. You don't have to go through the same way. It, yes, it works for some streams, but there is. Uh, but it may not be for everyone you know and everybody is unique and in a fast paced digital world uh, i mean the jobs of tomorrow are going to be like drone operators and uh, and and so many jobs that are that are not in the curriculum you know so it's Absolutely. and it's always changing so i think the fastest way to grow is to teach and uh, and and implement and then teach so it has a you have a, an an impact on your students uh, the fourth principle that i've noted down is uh, it's a, i think it's a chinese proverb it's like to know and not to do is not to know okay. or in other words like you got to really you, know, you got to implement uh, and especially in this uh, game of coaching teaching uh, even in my community i've seen a lot of members they just love learning mm. but when it comes to doing something happens there's some <laughs> short circuit in the brain like <laughs> i can't build this system or i can't put up this this thing yeah. so i think the rubber needs to meet the road at some point and i whole i like the whole idea of you know just just taking action firing even if it's imperfect action it's better than no action like you just take it because then you will know what at least you know what what where, where you got where you got stuck. exactly i always say there is no such thing as failure either you win or you learn that's absolutely <laughs> that's true yeah failure you know, is only uh, feedback you were, you were saying feedback. you were mm-hmm. yeah you were saying this implementation <clears throat> and again i'm reminded of a story of gurudev yeah um, way back uh, i i would lo- love to share it if you would please please love uh, to know so <clears throat> one morning he he called all of us and we, at that time the ashram was very small you know there were like 50 or 60 of us on the ashram mm. and he called all of us and aaj hum ashram ko chamka denge we will clean the whole ashram no properly mm. and you can imagine how we all felt clean the ashram mm. really and so you know suddenly everybody had important things to do 
Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, he he came in. He came to you know the admin block at around ten in the morning, and just one or two people were there. Mm-hmm. He said, "Where is everybody? Why are they not cleaning?" I said, "We should clean the ashram today." And then people said, "Oh, you know, he had to go here and she had to go there." Yeah. He said, "Oh, all right, then I will start cleaning." And wow. he picked up the bucket and the mop and the you know and the broom and he started cleaning. And of course, when people heard Gurudev is cleaning, everybody came and said, "Guruji, you leave it. We will do it." No, no, I will do it with you. And you mm. know what? He actually spent the entire day cleaning the ashram with us. Wow. And uh, you know, you talked about Sabadi mm. that evening in Satsang when we sat for sat for meditation. You know, he just closed our eyes. and when we opened them it was 3 hours we had like meditated for 3 hours amazing. without anything the, the the state of mind was so amazing mm. and then gurudev was sitting there and he said jab seva karte ho tab meva milta hai when you do mm. seva <laughs> then you get the merit of that when you you know Absolutely. when you when you serve and mm. and and he is such a wonderful example of a person who implements everything and i, I guess that's why we all you know adore him and love him and and, and do what we do yeah. for him you know and that's what we have also learned that mm. it's no point telling people you should meditate every day if you yourself don't meditate every day there is no integrity no. or authenticity there yes right yes, absolutely so, that's that's so true that's so true and, and i'm so glad that you had that that opportunity to you know be with him i mean for so many years and you've seen the way it's grown and mm-hmm. uh, it's it's amazing you know, really uh, thank you for sharing that that story i can in fact relate, relate this even to my uh, gurudev story uh, my mm-hmm. spiritual master's name is uh, his holiness jay prataka swami mm-hmm. uh, he is an indian uh, citizen he's an american uh, body but indian citizen lived uh, he lives in kolkata uh, in, in mayapur and uh, he shares a story of very similar like uh, when he was uh, in uh, in canada and he was just a very new this is back in the 70s uh, he's been a sanyasi since uh, 1970 so he's one of the, one of the mm-hmm. leading sanyasis in in our movement so he says uh, he was actually cleaning toilets and he was doing it so happily and uh, a very big businessman came in this car and he said and he stopped and he asked him like why are you so happy he asked the question you know and you're cleaning toilets and so and the response was uh, you know i'm i'm doing this as a service and i i feel so happy i feel that sense of uh, right. i feel so happy because i'm serving so exactly. like you absolutely said like the 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 fruit of uh, all the meditation uh, comes when there is that that seva that is done before you know i can totally relate to what you said which leads me to the next point which is uh, the other uh, success principle is um, selling is a form of service for me okay <laughs> and usually and i know i had actually a problem with this before when i was uh, promoting my courses and products or like even before uh because coming from a spiritual you know background the seva bhav was there it was installed at a younger age but i had it i had it i was finding it very tough to ask people for money like it was i don't mind doing things for you but i don't feel like asking anything from you like that did not feel good and i had to really work on that part internally for quite some time and thanks to personal development t har wecker uh, success gyan events i went to this millennium mind intensive and you know had some shifts over there and then uh, now i mean so that is another success principle that i want to share like the reason i've been able to be successful in business is because i do not look at business as a separate thing and spirituality is a separate thing uh for me business is an enabler of my spiritual activities Absolutely. yeah so when i'm conducting my business when i'm asking people for money i know that when that value exchange happens it is going to value them even more so in fact if i give it away for free they are not going to value it so Absolutely. when they value it more only then it will add value to their life correct so when that shift happened uh i mean for me i went on a roll like webinar selling uh i continue to do that and uh, and because i truly believe in my product that's one two is uh, i'm doing this for a for a higher cause yes i need my vitamin m and my oxygen for myself <laughs> and my family first i need that and then uh, you know for all the other initiatives and the charities and other, everything else that i do it's it's such a it's it's so, so much more so business is not really a it's not like a material activity anymore <laughs> as uh, we see it and i and of course i draw my inspiration from you know arjuna from the gita like he was going to quit right And right. Krishna told him, uh, "You're you're a fool if you quit. You you got to still do what you have to do. You're a warrior. 
but uh, do it for me you know do it with love be an enlightened so he was an enlightened warrior so i'm really inspired by that uh, you know by that personality uh, with whatever i'm doing here and so that is the other success principle i'm mean, just to recap less is more build your business and life in cycles learn do and teach like be an implementer like knowing and not doing is not knowing and so i do not look at business as a separate thing and spirituality is a separate thing again i am reminded of a quote by gurudev he said business is the wings of spirituality and spirituality is the heart of business absolutely beautifully said that's and, amazing uh, you know he he said that in our tradition in india we have lakshmi and narayana who are married narayana is yes. the ultimate guru and mm. lakshmi is the goddess of wealth and mm. we have elevated wealth to goddess level exactly. so uh, mm. you know have that respect mm. and uh, yeah so so i absolutely. we are like uh, <laughs> <laughs> i think all spiritual tradition somewhere or the other have meeting points and in it's definitely just, definitely just all our the principles are always there always the same. time place and circumstances uh, of different teachers coming and uh, you know uh, giving a different process or what it could be the processes all lead to the same goal i'm sure you're you're the master of this <laughs> <laughs> so that's amazing so besides this a few other things is uh, you know for me uh, you know meditation uh, you know i've been also doing it since a young age i've uh, been doing japa meditation so you know chant the names of god on beads i've uh, yeah. been doing that uh, so again spirituality has been more like a clearing the cash and cleaning the heart <laughs> uh, which always keeps happening you know? so i think that gives better clarity on on the next step and uh, and i think the ultimate uh, you no know, thing about being successful is is following one mentor like just like how you have just you know followed the path surrender to one guru and just following that that process there are many there could be many schools so, like uh, you know with different processes uh, but you cannot compare like if i'm studying in, i i studied in bishop cottons by the way so and there's baldwins on the other side now you cannot go to baldwins and say uh, you know You suck, and then say the, <laughs> tell the rules of Bishop Cottons over there. Which was school you're you're following? Like completely surrender to the process. Like follow the mentor. Same. So, for like in spirituality, we understand that you know we can't really reach our destination unless it, we are going through a channel or a via media of the guru. And the same applies even in business. Like you find a mentor who is really, you know, who knows what they're doing, who has the right value system, and just follow that system completely. And the problem today is. there's so much of information people are taking bits and pieces from everywhere and it's very easy to become an influencer on youtube on instagram and uh, and it's very easy for people to get allured by all the shiny objects so i think that is another important success principle like whoever you pick as your teacher uh, if you know if you believe in what they are teaching just just follow go full on into it and success is sure it's only the people who are having one leg here one leg there you know they're jumping around there i mean they won't achieve that and so what are your thoughts on that yes so you are, you i mean that's what we always say that if you want to if you want to cross the river then you cannot cross it in more than one boat you have to mm. sit in one boat and cross it and that does not mean that other boats are no good absolutely yes you know, we totally respect all but follow one yes and i you know it's amazing how the principles of business and the principles of spirituality kind of interlink well yes, lakshmi exactly. narayan are married right mm, <laughs> so uh, so yeah you i completely agree with you that um, mm. if you have a mentor and you're lucky enough to find a mentor for mm. business yes. uh, or and you are even luckier to find a guru mm. who 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 is uh, committed to your spiritual progress yes then keep a one pointed focus over there and just just you know and you will yes. get there there is no two ways about it mm. absolutely absolutely okay i've got one more question yeah what is your biggest strength um how do you find it i think when i look back at the patterns of my life is uh, i think simplifying things is my biggest strength uh, right from school college like i i just had this ability to like learn a lot of stuff and just make it simple like even before when i flunked my 12th went into music industry uh, i used to teach music production i used to teach people how to make music and stuff uh, and even now i like I, uh, I i used to i i'm still a piano player but i the production side like how do you use the uh, right. digital audio workstations uh, how do you record mix uh, how do you create electronic music so i used to like really make music completely on a laptop 100% and then i went on to make ringtones 
so i used to teach people how to do this and people were like twice my age yes. and uh, and the regular feedback i would get from my the people who were my students back then was like i made it so simple that they could understand so taking complex information and making it simple is like guess my my biggest strength wow. and uh, which i discovered when i was probably 19 years old and even before that the pattern was going back to school days but i think uh, the other strength besides this is uh, like if everybody is doing something i like to do something else you know it's like so <laughs> not following the not following the the herd you know correct so i guess that's probably been a pattern i've seen uh, even in school was always i was an outstanding student uh, standing outside class most of the time <laughs> not really following the the norms uh, and always questioning you know always kind of question the if something is there like even in spirituality also um i used to do a lot of questioning like i want to know exactly why right. okay, so i was very curious and then once i get the get the answer like okay yes perfect now i get it okay so now let me just go for it but so, you know this is this is something that is so unique about indian spirituality where you are encouraged to ask questions exactly in yeah. fact all the big epic scriptures that have come including the bhagavad gita you can the uh, patanjali yog sutra yes, or yes. Uh, ashtavakra gita whatever you say it's a it all started format. with a question it all yes. started with someone asking somebody hey what's going on here mm, <laughs> right true and true, true. Uh, it is so amazing that we have a system which actually says ask questions yes mm. right <laughs> it's so free you know it is it is such a such an amazing place where i, I mean i remember there were certain certain lectures in school where you were not allowed to ask questions where if you asked mm. a question you were told don't show off yes <laughs> and, and and the sincerity was never recognized and and mm. uh, uh, it did lead to a lot of disillusionment with the with the education system but i kind of persevered and you mm. know <laughs> finished mm. it yes uh, so true so true i think the the i think the quality i love this quote by dr d martin he says the quality of the questions you ask is going to determine the quality of your life you know so it's so so true and for me like uh, you know i think that other strength was you know always trying to get the clarity in in everything and not doing something just because everybody is doing it absolutely that also i guess that's that's <laughs> the answer to the question and uh, what is your most vulnerable point how where where are you weakest and how do you deal with that weakness i have to say sometimes i sleep sleep super late even now you know that's my vulnerable side <laughs> you know, sometimes what happens is uh, you know i just get like a buzzing ideas like we suddenly wake up like one two and mind is working it doesn't happen all the time but uh, but even though i say uh, that we got to like follow the four day work week be fully you know in working cycles as always is you know things life takes over and but I, but beautiful thing is i don't really beat myself on it like if i just let it flow and uh, i just catch up you know suppose i i just get a whole stream like a download of ideas that whole night i'm just noting it down because i don't want to miss that you know there's something that's coming and i just want to catch uh, capture all of that and then um, then i just sleep over and just go on till 9 9 10 a.m. and then get up, <laughs> you know. Just but but definitely that whole aspect of uh, getting that seven to eight hours, uh, I, I like to make it a point. And I'm using the Aura Ring to track that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm not sure if you've if you've heard about that uh, device. Yeah. 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 So I it's beautiful. I mean, I'm able to see patterns uh, in the app. Okay, my readiness score for the day. And and in fact, when I was doing the Panchakarma last time in uh, Mysore, I went to IVAC in Mysore. Uh, like there, I was like scoring 95. uh 95% percent every single day because i was sleeping correctly like there was no uh, technology i was not doing webinars uh and uh, i would like sleep at 9 get up at like 5 am 6 am fully rested fully feeling fresh and scoring really good so i think my my vulnerable thing right now is is one is i'm definitely an open book there's there's no filters uh if i'm doing something i don't this, I, mean, i don't think that is a vulnerability at all i think that's that's yeah. your authenticity and integrity coming through mm. yeah i guess uh, sometimes i find it hard to say no to people also you know so I try I try my best to do it <laughs> but i guess yeah life is not i i just i'm i i'm ready to embrace the the flaws that are there there's a long way to go and uh, also my sadhanas are like up and down like i'm talking about my spiritual sadhanas compared to before so when i was a bachelor it was different like fully focused and stuff 
uh, after family, kids, you know, things take its own shape and form, but still the core is always there. So yeah, I guess the, that's my vulnerable side. Yeah. So you have to schedule that in, you know, this is the meditation teacher talking. Since you have got yes. three schedules, you have to put in this time. Absolutely. Just definitely. for heart. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So, one, yeah. one last question, Sid. Um, you have written this fabulous book, You Can Coach. Mm. And I know many people who watch our channel uh, wonder how people write books. Mm. Any quick tips for budding authors? I think you'll have a bunch of tips. <laughs> but I'll just give you from my perspective. Uh, you know, I in fact never thought I would write this book. I just wanted to create a textbook for my students. I didn't a, you know, envision this to be like a like going to be hitting an international bestseller or anything like that. You know, that was not even in the back of my mind uh, before I started. But later on, once I started to okay, once I decided, okay, let's start, you know, putting together something. Uh, I created like a whole strategy uh, to build out the entire, you know, book. Uh, so a few tips that I want to give is uh, this may be a little bit different from what other book author coaches would say. I would say you first build products, first build digital courses and products, uh, because that will help you bring out what is already there in your head as a like a first dump of your knowledge mm. okay, in the form of your videos. Then second step is you start building a community. So you sell your products to a community and as you're building the community, uh, do a lot of one-to-ones to understand exactly what, you know, what they're uh, looking for. Because as once you've launched a product and once you're interacting with people and it will help you move to step three, which is you will start to validate your concepts. Okay. It's, it's very easy to write a book. You can just like, you know, record a voice note and, you know, just, you can easily launch these days. Launching a book is not a big thing, but if you want to really bring out something that's going to have a true impact in your audience. Uh, you need to have some validated concepts. And then once you have that in place, uh, for me, I love to use mind maps. So when I was writing, you can coach, I decided, okay, I'm going to do nine chapters and I want to have like three, uh, you know, I want to have three sections. Okay. So there are three sections, plan, launch, grow, and three under each. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, triangles and hexagons, uh, you know, as shapes, you know, so are the six steps to do something or three secrets. So, uh, followed that framework. And then I started to, uh, put together in mind map. This is just like overall concepts, what I should cover under each chapter. And then once my concepts were clear, the next step was, I started to, uh, first make a list of all the stories from my life that I've had like, a an impact on me. Uh, it could be my grandfather's story. It could be my college uh, flunking uh, story, a story when I tried to sell for the first time from the stage. So because facts tell, but stories sell and stories is what you can really establish your concepts on a deeper level. So once I got the structure of the book ready, then I went and made a list of uh, a bullet point list of all the potential stories of, from my life that I can share in the book, which is connecting to one of the concepts. Mm -hmm. So every chapter of my book, I open with a story or I open with a, some situation from my personal life. So then it hooks the reader and then I get into the actual you know, concept uh, later on in the book. So that is my next step is, uh, you know, start to uh, maintain like a scrapbook of uh, stories and different ideas. And then when it comes to writing the book for me, it was the easiest thing because I just put a voice recorder. I had my mind map in front of me and I just started to speak it all out. Like just whether it's perfect or not perfect. Then I went to this website called rev.com, R-E-V.com, where you can upload a voice, uh, an audio file or a video file and it will transcribe the entire thing and send it back to you. It's pretty oh. accurate. So I took all of that, all of the textual content that was my brain dump of my voice notes. Mm -hmm. I sent it to an editor, uh, a proofreader and editor asking her to like completely polish it up, you know, because the way that one would speak is different from the way one would write. So uh, she had to like really... Uh, you know, polish that up and I got like the first draft uh, that came back from her. And then I started to add more elements you know, like piece by piece by piece. So that took me around, around 20 days time. So the whole book writing process for me was a uh, uh, one month time, but it was uh, probably a 10 year of uh, <laughs> assimilation of concepts and ideas and, and three years of uh, interaction with my students. And of course the launch part, what I, for me, it was an easy thing, uh, because I, I already had the products and the community. I started to drum up towards the launch, telling them that I'm going to launch on this date. So buy the book. 
So everyone were waiting for the book, and when I when I launched the book on that day, it was already the bestseller. So you know, pick the right category on Amazon, hit the bestseller, and then um, now I'm continuing to build the momentum even after after launch. So I I was just on a podcast with uh, Johnny Dumas for the second time, one of the number one podcasts in the world for entrepreneurs, where uh, I promoted the book there. So I'm doing a whole round of uh, podcasts and interviews uh, every month. I do one or two. Did a few newspaper articles. Uh, just to talk about it then later on i launched a board game also to supplement the book mm. so it's a board game called i can coach uh, and to help people find their niche so all of these things happened last year so i think those are the tips that i want to share so just to recap is like build products build community validate concepts then writing is going to be much more, much more easier you can get stuff done using technology yeah so does that mean that there is going to be a Write your way to success. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think I've done it. Lot of lot of people have done it already. So <laughs> I don't think, think they've done it in this way. Uh, I said this, this is a really cool way of thinking about it. Really, yes, yes, uh, a fabulous way of thinking about it. Mm. You do you have any questions for me? Sir? Anything you would like to ask me around sleep, success, meditation? Anything you would like? Yeah, I wanted to ask you a question on. Uh, it's a pretty interesting uh, you know concept that i read for the first time in uh, napoleon hills think and grow rich and uh, it's a it's the concept of uh, sex transmutation okay i and i know you've been living in the ashram and and you know people who've been in ashram they they really conserve their energy and you know their semen and stuff so i wanted your thoughts on that connecting to success I know it's a little of an off question, but I'm sure you because you've been there, living it. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? So, you know, when when you are very young, and uh, you have your favorite toy, like I remember mine was a teddy bear. It was a mm. very cute brown teddy bear with very cute, uh, you know, buttons for eyes and very. And I used to take that teddy bear everywhere. The teddy bear was like life to me, you know. Uh, if i went to a party if i went to someone's house if we went uh, to mathuran which is a hill station near near bombay uh, the teddy bear had to come along there was just two, no two ways about it the teddy bear had to be there you know and as i grew older uh, the teddy bear was not so important anymore now it was being in school scoring great grades uh, being with friends and then as i grew older uh you know it was about getting into iit it was about figuring out what life was all about uh and so on and uh, sex is another teddy bear and uh, just as you as you know when you are 18 you don't think about teddy bears do you or when you are 30 you don't think about teddy bears right you say well theek hai yaar big deal right and it is a natural thing for it to happen it is not something that you force it's not something that i will give up the teddy bear today it's it's not like that right and it's exactly the same with sex uh if you try to in quotes give it up you might end up feeling frustrated and miserable but through your practices through your growth if you find that it is not so important anymore and it it becomes like a teddy bear that oh i used to have a great time with my teddy bear now i don't require it anymore and it is a natural thing that happens then you have got it so the whole concept of uh, you know transforming that energy to other creative energy when i'm you know, looking at nikola tesla and others uh, even there i heard that he was someone mm-hmm. who was he was able to like you said i mean the urge for having an uh, you know a sexual relationship was never there it, but he was transmuting that energy to something else so any research you have done on on that so, on, so yeah. the, mm. the 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 sex chakra which is uh, just behind your genitals is actually the place where creativity also comes so it's creation or procreation got it mm. uh, and so you will notice that when you are involved in a lot of extremely creative activity the thoughts of sex don't come sex will the thoughts of sex will come more when you are idle when you have nothing to do but if you are involved engaged 
you know going for it chasing your dream organizing stuff making stuff creating stuff sex will be like the teddy bear you know the, uh, <laughs> Uh, there will be some biological requirement and that uh, that is different for different people some people mm. need it a lot some people yes. they don't care and for some people it is like once in a while great you know uh but for all people when they are really focused on to creating stuff uh and they realize that uh this whole thing is just a play and display of energy so this is something that we talk about on the advanced meditation courses of the art of living where nice. the base chakra is where interest comes in life so it's either interest or lethargy there are two over there and then you go up to the sex chakra and there that that is creation or procreation and so when you create you come to the stomach and what do you do with the stomach you share you're generous right, right. so right. generosity comes from the stomach and who do you share with you come to the heart with people you love nice right mm. and love brings gratitude which is on the throat yes and love and gratitude put together brings awareness which is on the third eye mm. and then on the top there is only bliss on the on the crown chakra but as you Good go one. down so if you get angry you feel guilty that mm. is guilt you know sorrow is in the throat which yeah. makes you fear or hate somebody or something which is mm. on the heart which makes you jealous yeah which mm. then takes you into lethargy so it the whole thing whether the energy is going up and you are blossoming or if the energy is going down and it just observing the flow of energy can shift it fantastic fantastic but that requires so, a lot of discipline so yeah so leading to the, i mean uh, to continue on this so it's it's either blooming or it is imploding like depending yeah. on yeah so if somebody is on a like they feel they are going towards that downward spiral uh what can they do to to snap out of that cycle so intellectually i can tell you yeah it's just observing the emotion and delinking it from the situation got it but to actually practically do it would require a lot of meditation meditation practice uh, so you know it's not the event that bothers you it is your interpretation of the event mm true he came late my husband came late from work mm can be interpreted as he doesn't care for me mm. all he cares for is work uh you know our love life has gone for a toss tata da da it can go mm. like that mm. or he's working so hard he really loves me he knows i really want those diamonds for my for my birthday and so he's putting in those extra hours so that he can gift it to me nice perspective and so mm. so it's just the, the 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 situation is husband came home late mm. right it is your interpretation of that situation that gets you into trouble or makes you feel great got it mm. right and so the ability to dealing your emotions from the situation mm. will allow the energy to again start flowing up beautiful amazing amazing thank you for sharing that was a pretty very nice uh, you know insight that you shared uh, and uh, my next question is to do with sleep itself is uh, we have a lot of our members in my community who are trainers like coaches lot of teachers who are there and uh, many of them may experience this like yes they have the drive they have the passion they want to like build something for themselves they are working towards it and uh, in the in this process they end up losing sleep you know like they are always envisioning okay what should i do next what should i do next so what tips can you give for you know people like this who are yes they are driven and uh, but maybe their brain is not switching off so what tips could you give for that i like to think of sleep as going on a very hot date okay <laughs> and if you're going out with the guy or girl of your dreams uh what would you do one hour before that for sure you will not be checking instagram for sure Absolutely. you will not be uh you know scrolling your emails or whatsapp messages mm. you will be dressing up sprucing yourself up trying to look the best cleaning up the house you know mm. uh you'll be doing stuff like that right you need to do the same thing for sleep you need to prepare for sleep see from the awake state to the sleep state is a huge shift for the body okay there are so many processes that have to shut down and so many processes that have to start for example uh, the simple thing of pooing shitting yeah uh, do you notice that after about 8 pm you don't need to go to the 
you yeah. know you don't need to shit it's yes. because your brain has told your uh, you know the other regions that hello you know it's close for the day we will mm-hmm. do it tomorrow morning <laughs> right so there are many systems like that that need to shut down so that you can get a full eight hours sleep right and mm-hmm. so the brain needs to be given messages and reinforced messages that hello now it's time to sleep mm-hmm. wind down close down shut down yeah right mm-hmm. so one of the things that i do and you know when i write books or i i want to write a blog article or i think you know for just like you i am constantly thinking of how to make the experience of meditation yes. mm-hmm. uh, better for my students correct so uh, i so much vibe with you you know sometimes at 1 am you get a brilliant idea and you say oh i need to you know do <laughs> and I, i've been there done that right mm. so what i do is before i sleep uh i make a note of things that i need to do so the brain becomes very insecure that just suppose you forget it's important suppose you forget so it keeps mm. trying to remember stuff and that keeps you away so if you write it somewhere or i i have a word file on the, file, on the yeah. so i just type it out there so my brain knows okay it's written i can let go of it yeah that's a nice step this is yeah. this is one thing the second thing is you will notice that the more or less the last thought that you sleep with is the first thought that you wake up with okay hmm. okay this this is something that is very interesting that i have noticed many people say so hmm. so the thoughts that you go to sleep with are what will go on in your brain maximum uh, until you wake up and that's like 8 hours of processing time so hmm. if you have a problem and i would limit it to one or two problems if you are thinking hmm. okay tomorrow i got to do this presentation i need some great ideas for it and just mm-hmm. after that go to sleep you will be amazed at the ideas that you get when you actually start working on it nice so mm-hmm. uh, two things then one write down the thing so that your brain gets the gets the um, uh, security that okay he's not going to forget it mm. and two think about one or two things that you are really struggling with that you want solutions for and then you sleep and in between that you know taking a hot shower is a brilliant idea you know a hot shower hot water falling on your skin brings the blood to the skin and therefore it reduces the core body temperature and you really? need a low core body temperature to fall asleep fast and stay asleep mm. you so know so just so, just before sleeping you just uh, have the yeah, hot shower like and straight hit the bed 5 10 minutes before sleeping nice have your hot shower maybe listen to some chanting mm. uh, it's another very good idea so that to shut all lights and just keep your eyes open and look in the dark you know like mm-hmm. 70% of our eyes are created are, are geared to look in the dark but we don't look in the dark and that's why mm-hmm. we have failing eyesight Got so 5 10 minutes of keeping your eyes open so like this if you create a ritual i will do this 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 and then i will hit the bed mm-hmm. it gives a very strong message to the brain that hey shut down all this now it's time to sleep and that message needs to go loud and clear amazing thank you for sharing that's super well i'll implement that starting today yeah, <laughs> thank you all right so uh, i guess the, i mean this was this was an absolutely fabulous interaction uh, siddharth and um, i know uh, you have these amazing webinars and amazing uh, uh, lessons uh, and and courses for people who feel that they have things to share share with the world and don't know where to start and uh, uh you know we will leave a link below that uh, you can go and check out siddharth's work and uh, and see what he does i mean with this little inter- interaction that we have had uh, you know you can you can make out how much authenticity he has uh, i mean to say on a public forum that you had a panic attack to say on a public forum that you have been vulnerable here that you you have trouble saying no uh, this requires a really brave heart my sincere admiration for for what you do and all you do and all my love to to your community and i hope uh, the people from our community also benefit uh, from your expertise in in uh, bringing panchakarma to the business mm. so thank you thank you really appreciate that love the you know the interaction with you and you are such a beautiful soul yourself and uh, it really shows your 30 years so you know my respects to the amazing work that you are doing and uh, and for the mission that you're carrying forward for your spiritual master it's it's really commendable and for me it's an honor to have a, to have been here and and having this interaction with you so yeah thank you so much just that i'm just in gratitude that right now thank you thank you sir